Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit? This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. So I have one of those moments today where as a parent, you get a call from the school saying, your child's been hurt, come get them. And it was like, oh shit. So I head over there. And uh, so this is my oldest son, Tyson, who is seven. He's in grade two. And uh, I go over there and he's kind of sitting in this little chair and his cheek, his left cheek is like really swollen. And I'm like, what happened? I can see that there was, there was some blood, but it's like dried and stopped bleeding. And uh, I probably bit his lip. And uh, they're like, he was like, you know, I collided with someone, their head hit my face. And, uh, you know, he's crying and swollen and like quite bruised. And, uh, you know, they, they just do kind of like the basic check. I'm like, does he have a concussion? Is anyone checking from that? They're like, no, I mean, this is just me also too, as you know, former practicing chiropractor. I'm like, did you guys fucking check shit? And they don't, they don't, you know, they're just checking, make sure that he's like breathing. So then I take him to walk-in clinic, call my husband on the way we get to the first walk-in clinic and I'm not really worried, but you know, Tyson's a little scared and it's hurting and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, stay really calm and say, buddy, it's okay. Your body's going to heal. And he's getting all choked because he had a play date with his bro today. And he keeps asking about it. I'm like, Oh God, I don't want to like say no, even though it's probably going to like most likely going to be a no, like we have to get you checked, buddy. You, you know, you could be really hurt. And, um, So, uh, so we get to the first walk-in clinic and it's an hour and 20 minute wait smelling of paint fumes. They had just freshly painted. So I'm like, I'm out of here. We then go to now at this point too, I've called my husband. He's met us over there. And so we leave the clinic as we're leaving. Ed's my husband is pulling up and I'm like, listen, we're going to bolt. We got to find another clinic. Cause like this one's way too long away and it's like gross in there and yada, yada. So he's like, great. There's one that's at this certain address. We're like, okay, good. GPS my phone because I'm feeling like I'm I'm pretty good in crisis situations. I can be fairly calm and level-headed, just like okay, what needs to happen, especially when it's my my child, right? So then, because Ed came in his car and I'm in my car and he wants to go with Daddy, so then I GPS and the GPS is taking me some weird fucking place. Like it's saying streets to turn on that are just not there, and I'm like, what the fuck? Now I'm starting to get a little bit rattled because I can't fix, I mean, I know the city live and we've lived here for a little bit over a year, but you know, I'm still, I'm, I'm a little bit off because of what's happened. So I'm like, I'm just going to GPS. You ever done that? You know, where it's like, you, you've been to places before, like, but maybe it's new and you're like, I'm just going to GPS just to make sure. Cause a lot of times when I haven't done that, it bites me in the ass and I end up like, I don't know where the fuck I am. I'm like, Oh my God, I should have set the GPS. So I stop just to text my husband and to say, Hey, the GPS is taking me someplace weird. Um, like I'll be there as soon as I can. He's like, yeah, me too. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is going on today, but some weird shit energetically going on. So I get rerouted and I know that it's across the street from this mall. It's a certain address. It's 2300 Shelbourne. I'm at a light across the street. I get to where the mall is. I see the walking light. I'm like, Oh, there it is. And then, so I, I can see, and Ed, in the meantime, has texted me, said, there's no parking. So I'm like, no problem. Let me go to the one in the nearby strip malls. I'll park there and I'll walk over. So I do that. I'm walking over. He's like, I'm looking for parking. I'm like, no problem. I'll be there in a minute. I'll grab Tyson. I'll bring him in. And uh, so then I get, and I get to the parking lot. I'm like, I don't see it. I'm like, where are you? He's like, I'm at the walk-in clinic. I'm like, shit. I'm thinking, great. There's more than one. I'm at the wrong one. And he goes, it's the one with the green awning. And I look out down the road and I see it and I go, fuck. I go, I'm at the wrong one. He's like, fine, I'm gonna go across the street to find, I'm gonna go across the street or something. Hangs up the phone. And then then I think, oh shit, what does he mean? Coming across the street to meet me? Are we going to this one now? We say, (laughs) I'm just like, fuck. I'm literally like walking to the street going, fuck, fuck, fuck. And uh, I call him back honey, are we, no, 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 I'm staying here, it's a short wait, I I checked online, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm coming over, I'm coming over, looking for a parking spot, can't fit, I live in Victoria, BC, it's a very um, green, I was going to say green as in environmentally, but green in many ways, it's also green and lovely, and we don't get snow here, and everything is all green, because we get a lot of rain, stuff like that, and um, 
but environmental green and the parking spots are often quite small there's a lot of small car spots uh a lot of uh there's some smart car like you know um i'm starting to say electrical car um you know spots and then i drive an suv so i'm trying to fit in these small ass spot i have to turn around finally get in you know i'm like it's like hey we're in here now i'm like okay cool we get in waiting actually didn't wait very long and i'm thinking because i'm worried about stuff like concussion i again i i know what happens with my training as a chiropractor and you know the shit can, can happen i'm thinking just again logically like man for his cheek to be that swollen it had to have been quite a quite a hit like quite a blow for it to blow up like to blow up like that right on his cheek and uh but you know he's acting pretty logical and coherent and everything and um and I'm also looking inside and it, I think it looked like his bottom teeth were like a little jack, but you know, Tyson's seven or eight. So he's got like starting to lose teeth and he's got new ones growing in and they grow in kind of funky and weird. And you know, they kind of go through a stage at a certain point where their teeth are just like, they look like they've, they're like hillbillies, right? They just got these crazy looking teeth and uh, it's totally adorable, but crazy looking teeth. And uh, so then my husband's there with him. We bring him in and, you know, yeah, doctor checks him out, asks him some questions, you know, nothing happening. They basically the questions are just like to check his focus and make sure he's okay. And they're like, you just keep an eye on him. If, of course, if there's anything like he's vomiting, he gets a headache, he, you know, his vision's affected, he's drowsy, you know, all that kind of stuff, slurred speech, like bring him in because like immediately because he probably has a concussion. Other than that, he's like, good. And the whole time too, Tyson kept saying to me like, mommy, can I have a play date? And I'm like, well, buddy, we'll have to ask the doctor. I think the doctor's going to say, like, no, 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 like, keep him home, rescue him, quiet. He's like, no, you're good, buddy. You're good. Like, it's up to mom and dad, but, like, you're good on my end. I'm like, okay. So now I text back his friend's mom, who I texted first saying, hey, I think the play date's off. And Tyson was so stoked. He's been wanting to play date with this little bro, Damien, for a while. They were in the same class for first grade, and there was a different class for second grade, and yeah, he was just, he's been talking about this and like just pumped. Even though we only set up two days ago, it's like, might as well be like the event of the year. You know how kids kind of make up or make out experiences, right? Like this was so important to him. And uh, so then text back Donna. So why am I sharing this big ass long story about my son's little playground injury, right? So I was thinking this and you know, I always think of these experiences. I'm like, what's the lesson for me to see in this? Oh yeah, that's right. Sometimes things don't appear to be as big a deal as you actually think they are. It's just not that big of a deal, right? And I am certainly not someone aware of something happens. Now my kids have rarely gotten hurt in like anything like this. Like, I mean anything. Tyson, when he was about two, we were doing a photo shoot actually in Maui before we had our, our youngest son, Kai. And we're swinging them on the beach. The photographers are having us like swing on each side. You kind of know what that looks like, right? And uh, and he suddenly starts crying. And we had to bring him to the hospital. And he had nursemaid's elbow, which means it's dislocation of his elbow. But we had to go through x-rays, make sure it's not fractured. Like, that's really the only thing. And that little guy, Kai, had a small, small fracture. Like, not even one that's cast. Uh, it was about a year ago. It was about a year ago that it happened. So outside of that, I mean, nothing really has happened with us. Considering we got two boys, like, that's pretty good, right? And so, you know, these types of things. And I trust the body. I know the body has an ability to heal. I'm not fearful of these things. But, you know, to watch your child go through stuff is it's hard, right? And um, so, but even I started to go to that place. And we just, we've had a really crazy past 48 hours since we came back from Laguna Beach we had an amazing five and a half, six days there. My husband was there with uh, Warrior Con, which is Warrior Convention, Warrior Con 2, actually. And we had a chance to share our story of following Warrior's Way for the last two and a half years, an amazing, incredible experience. And then we come back to kids being insane and shitstorms happening, and then this. And it was just like, in my mind, I started to make all this stuff into a big fucking deal with Tyson. And it really was that. It's like, it's just not that big of a deal. You know, how many times do we start to make things a big deal in our life when they're just, they're just fucking not. And it is our thoughts. And it is, it is that lizard brain that gets in there and begins to fuck with things. Begins to fuck with the logical thoughts you might have, the calm you normally have, the sanity that you normally carry in your life just kind of goes out the window. Because you start to make a big deal to something that's just simply not. So here's my more tip for today. 
What is it that you're making a big deal of in your life that is just simply not a big deal? It's just not. And so here's the second piece of that. What is one action step? Because you know I love action, sister. What is one action step you can make, like right now, right now in the next 24 hours, to just like, just let that shit go and begin to begin to like, just see the reality for what it is and not the big deal that you're making it out to be. And you need to journal this. If you don't write shit down, you will not see it. You will spin stories in your head. You know you do this. And you will not get to any kind of inside revelation. Writing things down, seeing it on paper, will show you the way, sister. And that's exactly why I'm giving away journals for free right now. For free, you just take care of the shipping. Here's where you get yours. It's a limited edition Women Who Want You More journal. I've sent out almost 300 to 12 or 14 countries around the world right now. Some other cool, amazing stuff I'm going to put in the package for you. And each one packaged by me, mailed by me. Me standing at the post office. Me filling out customs forms to send to you. And that's my gift to you, sister. You just take care of a little bit of shipping. So I want you to head over to, to right now to here to get yours. DrKarenOsborne.com slash free journal. And I will send that to you within the next week. And you will get it within two to six weeks, depending on what part of the world that you live in. In addition, I want you to go to drkarenosram.com slash the evolution. And I want you to watch the movie of five amazing women, Carrie, Amber, Rachel, Christina, and Melissa, who were at my recent live event four weeks ago here in Victoria, BC, Canada, and to see the change and what is really possible when you go through this immersion process and invest in yourself, sister, what's possible in just two days. And you'll have a chance to apply for the next event, which is in February 2018. And there's just six spots remaining for that. So that's over at drkarenalisman.com slash the evolution. So I will talk to the next episode, sister. A life of more is just one step away from you doing the fucking work every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the how to get more tip. Subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com slash newsletter. 